Hello everyone and welcome to this video. As 2023.1 has just been released, let's have a look at the, what we ranked in our team as a top 5 uh, features that was released in 23.1. As in many versions, we leveraged in 2023.1 uh, several feedbacks from our users and brought some uh, usability improvements. So let me show you side by side 2023 and 23.1 uh, to, so, to see some of these differences. So as a first example, if you go to went in 23, select anything component, and it says that you want to align or to use a given system to do it. Um, for selecting the system in 23, you were not able to uh, select row box. You had to select, and hopefully for this model, it goes pretty fine, but in some cases, it could be a little bit um, tedious to, to select entities, uh, the system. Now, coming back to, 20, coming to 2023, if I go to components, and if I select a system, now I can just drag a box and the, the system is selected. Let me show an ex another example, uh, which is about the project tool, uh, which is under topology. Uh, in the 23 version, when you wanted to, se uh, to project uh, some entities, for instance, a line on a given surface, uh, the orientation vector was there and you had to define your orientation, uh, align if needed, um, but it was not always clear that uh, you had to define the control uh, from uh, this widget. Uh, so from the, from version, my bad, 23.1, what we did instead was to, so let me go to topology, and again, Pro align project surfaces the source uh, will be still the line surface target will be this surface and the direction is directly defined here so that it be, it is clear uh, for every user that the direction has to be specified it's not uh, always specified by default One of the improvements we brought in 23.1 is about connector consolidation. Uh, so what does that mean? Let's have a look first at 23 and uh, at the representation controls. So representation controls have been there for a couple of versions and they now are the entities which uh, contain the definition of the realization for a given type in different solver. So for instance, for point connection, spot welds, rivets, what is the configuration uh, you would like to use. And one of the most common feedback we received about connectors was about this list of how much different realizations and some customer, let's say, got lost um, trying to identify which was the connection they needed to use for their case. So basically, what we did in 23.1 was to simplify this list, to remove um, some of this item and to move um, so these different cases uh, so here you see that we have the exact contact the exa with each affected zone and every difference uh, representations that were previously uh, labeled differently uh, now you will see the differences uh, when you browse when you navigate into the different options including for instance the type of material you want to select uh, or any other option um, here you have the uh, first overview about the different consolidations that we uh, run, whether about point consolidated consolidation, sorry, or about uh, line consolidation. If you want to get more information on this subject, there is a dedicated webinar that is available on the YouTube channel. Uh, I will put at the end of this video uh, the link uh, to a suggested playlist which contain all 2023 updates. In 
3.1 as in the other version, we also try to improve performances. So let me show you here two items where I improve performances, uh, starting with uh, element quality review. So which we get faster, not only for 2D, but of the other type of elements too. Uh, just make sure when you want to switch from one review mode to the other one um, that you see um, the square 1D, 2D or 3D uh, shown as blue uh, in order to switch. Otherwise, it, um, it won't be recognized. Uh, one nice feature also regarding this uh, legend in um, 23.1 is that the new results, you can set them at transparent. And again, you can switch from uh, one item to the other uh, to see the different results in, in, a pretty, uh, in a pretty quick way, let's say. Another performance is about uh, rebuild. Uh, and from um, 23 to 23.1, we significantly improve the performance when it comes to a full model, uh, either with all connectivity or without taking in, uh, into account the connectivity. Uh, when speaking about the full model, we're speaking about the 500 megabytes model, 2 million of nodes, 10 million of elements. Uh, so here you can see how uh, we were able to cut down the performances for the rebuild uh, for such models. Hello, in this video I want to show you one uh, of the new features of 23.1, which is uh, solid bolts. Uh, before going too much into details, let me go to connectors, create, uh, detect automatically the fast neural connections with the auto detection. So I have these four selections. And now let me go to connectors and I will just change my connector control to solid bolt. And right click, realize. Just to show you to start with, what does a solid bolt look like? So a solid bolt in does nothing but the solid mesh, it can be either hexa or tetra of a bolt, and it includes the possibility to define the contacts. Uh, so here, if I right click review, you will see the different uh, possible contacts. So you have one localized uh, general contact and one tie contact per, um, per bolt. That said, uh, let me jump a little bit into the, let me dig a little bit into the details. So first with auto detection here, uh, what it's important is always to have a look first at your model so that you can have a first understanding as a matter of diameter, as a matter of height, about uh, what do you measure so that you can define properly um, the max all diameter and the tolerance. Here I was a little bit higher, but uh, the default value for instance is 20, which was not required in my case. Uh, let me clear the review here. Then let me go to the controls. Uh, for the controls in the fastener, we now have this bolt solid option, which allows you to uh, define your different bolts of solid and you have different pattern. We have five different patterns. Currently I'm using pattern number five with these dimensions uh, which are listed uh, outer and inner diameter, uh, head, uh, height of the head and height of the body. Uh, plus uh, you have the mesh type, hexa or tetra, the mesh size. You can decide to include the pretension if needed here, let me open the parenthesis. Uh, let's use it with an initial stress of 20, for instance. Uh, let me go to connector. Right click, realize. And here you see that I've created uh, my, uh, I should see more collectors uh, with the loads defined on it. Pretension forces that I could review. So my pretension forces, they are defined on these bolts. So uh, if I look at the other options, uh, um, you have the possibility to define what is a shaft contact type. Is it a tight or a threaded? 
and you can uh, decide to assign directly property and material. Last, you can choose the definition of the orientation. Either you keep hypermesh computing it, or you decide to use your own defined vector for the orientation. So just coming back to the pattern, uh, you have different type of pattern, but so you just need to over your mouse in the um, in each of the dimensions here for the different pattern to see what are the different options available. And, and here was a, one of the most weighted feature in HyperWorks environment month, also HyperMesh, HyperView, HyperGraph. I'm speaking about Python support. So Python has been released officially for HyperView and HyperGraph to start with in 23.1. And uh, if I look at some information, uh, the version that we embed in our installation in version is version 3.8.10. So currently you can refer to the online help. We have a dedicated Python API reference guide in order to understand uh, what is available right now. So you have this getting started section just to explain you uh, how to get to the Python console and what are the modules to be loaded. And then for every of the three modules available, so the framework, which is the user interface environment, the hyperview package, hypergraph package, you have the list of the different options, and uh, you have some examples which are available in the online app. Uh, on top of this, just a couple of remarks uh, that I want to, that I would like to mention. Uh, so about TCL, we won't discontinued TCL uh, scripts, they will be maintained. Um, so either you can continue to work with TCL, but uh, we won't develop any more new APIs in TCL. In the future, we will develop in Python. So if you are willing to move to Python now, um, these are some recommendations to help you to transition to Python. Starting with, uh, if it's not already the case, uh, get familiar with Python. Uh, there are many resources that are available on the internet, uh, even if you look at the uh, Python console and it help, it points you to introduction tutorial that you can follow. So this is really step number one. Uh, step number two, this is something that I regularly recommend uh, when dealing, when hosting uh, Hyperworks automation trainings, is um, running an audit of your TCL scripts. Uh, if they are recent scripts that should be fine but if you are dealing with five years old or and sometimes i heard about 10 or 15 years old scripts uh, are they still valid um do, do is it still something that you need to support need to maintain or do we bring announcements in hypermesh hyperview hypergraph which would prevent you uh to maintain uh these scripts uh, really the goal here is to identify the obsolete script and this is a key point to save some maintenance and migration costs. Um, then one quick way to start with Python, uh, we will continue to support TCL, as uh, I mentioned it, and also we will provide some APIs uh, to allow you to run any TCL or HWC macro directly from Python API. Uh, with the eval TCL command, uh, I will just show you a script after and once you've done these preliminary steps, then you can start your new automation projects with Python. So let me switch to my hypergraph session. Um, let me run first a script um, the old way, let's say with a TCL script from my, uh, from my uh, folders, macro HM. So this is a script basically which, um, sorry, hyperview. Uh, which reads all the curves which are present in a model and which creates a table with all the information. Um, so this should run in a couple of seconds. Do I want to export the CSV? Yes, no. Uh, this was this is the original way to do it with TCL. If you want, short term, just to integrate your TCL scripts inside a Python environment, you can 
I just hit this to command import hw to import the module. Um, I don't know if uh, return string is always necessary. Let me try this way. Uh, this is this is working too. Just uh, hw .eval tcl to run the tcl command, and uh, we should get at the same point uh, in the same uh, in the same timing. So this is clearly how you can uh, start having a look at. Uh, Python. Uh, as a reminder, you have this uh, Python reference guide which you can find from the online help. And also, I would like to emphasize that we have a dedicated uh, forum section on our community website that uh, you can use for any general question, generic question about um, automation. So, if you have any general question, feel free to use the community so that every of our users can benefit from it. And obviously, if you have some... Um, so here, you just have to post your question. Obviously, if you have sensitive data or if you do not want to use forum for any other valid reason, uh, feel free to support uh, to send us a support request in the traditional way uh, through email or through the portal. And by the way, I forgot to mention it, but in our Halter Auto channel, there is an extra video with some details from our development team regarding what is available in 23.1 in Hyperview Hypergraph. Uh, I will uh, set it as a link in the video. So thank you everyone for reviewing this uh, top and see you later for another video.